All right, uh, here we are. We're going to do the second part of normal distribution. So this is when we don't have exactly one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations. We might have like 1.3 standard deviations. So we'll talk about that and we'll use a conversion, okay? So um, uh, our question here is how can we find the percents or the probabilities or the fractions of events associated with normal distributions? Okay. So our standard normal distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Now, and things in real life don't have a mean of zero or a standard deviation of one, but it still follows that within one standard deviation within the mean, about 68% of the data lies within there. Within two standard deviations, about 95% um, uh, uh, of the data lies in here, and then about 99.7% of the data lies within three standard deviations, okay? All right, so areas under our standard normal curve are always to the left of the z-score. So, for example, right here, you guys, uh, this is represents 84% right here if we added all of these up. If I said um, a z-score of 1, then we'd have this standard deviation would be all of the areas to the left. And if you think over here, you don't have to add them all up. Just right here at the zero, there's 50% on that side, 50% on that side. So we can add the 50% and the 34% and still get 84%. Or you can add up all those numbers right there. Okay, so it's always to the left. Okay, it's not exactly 84%. I think it's a little bit over 84%, but it's about 84%, okay? All right, so this table um, uh, we will be using, uh, uh, it's on, on our textbook on page uh, 1088, it allows us to find a greater range of z-scores, okay? So here, uh, the table highlights the area under the curve to the left of the z-score, uh, 1.3, okay? Be careful, this is negative 1. Point three. Notice how this is very small. Negative 1.3 would be like right about here and it would be to the left. 1.3 would be like right about here and to the left. So I know 1.3 is over 50%. In fact, it's, you know, it's going to have uh, about, uh, did I, I think I did it in the wrong area. Let's see. 1.3 is over here. Sorry. 1.3 is right there. And negative 1.3 would be like right about there. So the area to the left would be very small at negative 1.3. And the area to the left of positive 1.3 would be very large. So so um, it's uh, 0.9032. Okay. And then notice right here, this 0. 0.0000 plus, this just means it's slightly more than zero. Okay, uh, at negative 3.9. Okay, look, negative 3.9 is is uh, way over here. So it's getting into a very small, and to the left, the area is always to the left. It gives us a very small area. And then uh, right here, we have 1.000 minus, and so that just means it's a little less than 1. So over here, you guys, remember the whole curve is 100%. Let me go back here. The whole curve is 100% or 1, and so 3.9 is way over here. So the area to the left is pretty much 100% of the curve, which is which is a, a little less than 1, so it's not quite, okay? All right, so here's the curve, you guys. So the picture, the area to the left, and I'm going to be asking you and requiring you to draw the curve for every z-score that we calculate. Okay, so here's 1.3-ish, and you just estimate right here, and the area to the left is that 0.9032 that we got right here, 0 0.9032, 1. Point three. See how it's point 0.3 right there? Okay. All right. And then if we wanted to know the area to the right, we just take that away from 1. Okay. So the area to the right is point zero nine six eight. Now remember what we saw when we were looking at negative 1.3? Well, that's the same over here. The area to the left is negative 0 or point zero nine six eight because it's symmetrical. This area right here is going to be the same as this area on this side. All right. Okay, so because it's uh, uh, symmetrical. So when we're using data values for X bar, which is our sample mean, remember that? From a normal distribution that has a mean mu, a population mean, uh, and a standard deviation of sigma right there, um, we can standardize uh, all situations as long as it's normally distributed uh, with this formula. We can get a z-score using this formula. We take the sample mean, and we subtract the population mean, and we divide it by the 
population standard deviation. And then we just use that table to find the area or percent or probability that's uh, to the left. So here we go. Suppose the height in inches of U.S. women ages 20 to 29 are normally distributed. And that's an important word right there, normally distributed. With this mean, this is my mu, my population mean, um, 64.1 inches and standard deviation of 2.75 inches. We're going to find each, okay? The percent of women who are no more than 65 inches. Okay, so this is our, our, our X bar, our sample mean right there, okay? So we're going to plug, plug in the 65 right here. We're going to plug in the population mean and then the, divide it by the population standard deviation. Okay, so here um, you know, we just plug all that in, and, and the X bar is always the number that we're focusing on. Okay, so in this problem it's 65. Okay, so here we go. So uh, we plug it in, and then we find a Z score, and it's not, I think it's like 0.32 something, but our, our, um, uh, our table only gives us to the tenths. So we just round it to about 0.3, and then we look that up on our z-score table. Always make a graph, okay, and then your graph always has one, two, three standard deviations uh, to the right and to the left right there, okay. And so uh, about 0.3 is about right there. So um, that would be about the area, and then so it says uh, no more than, so no more than means to the left, okay, so less than, okay. So one, so we're looking at, um, okay, this is the, um, the, the table that was given in our textbook, and this is 1.3, but we want to go back to, what was it, we want to go back to 0 .3, 0 0.3, so make sure you're doing positive 0 0.3, not negative 0 0.3. So 0 0.3 is that number right there. Okay, so we just were, so that's the area right there. Okay, so um, uh, the area to the left is that, and it's asking for percent, so we move the decimal over two places, so about 61.79, okay? All right, how about this? The percent of women who are taller than 65 inches. Well, we found out who were shorter than 65 inches was, was that. So to find out who's taller would be this side over here. So it would be, we would shade this side. And I wish I had time. I didn't this morning. But I would have shaded this side. This is the side that we want right there. And we do 1 minus that. Okay, so 1 minus that is 38.21%. Okay, how about this? The probability uh, that a randomly chosen woman is between 60 and 63 inches. So those are two different um, uh, X bars. So we got to do the Z score twice. Okay. So here we're going to do um, uh, plug in 60 right here and plug in 63 right here. And they'll always give you the mean and standard deviation. So here we go. We're going to do that twice and we get that right there. Okay. So um, uh, when we look those up, so um, uh, here's Here's a negative 1.5 right here, and here's negative 0.4 right there. We want this little region right there, okay? So, um, so let's look up negative 1.5. So negative 1.5 is right there, and the other one was negative 0 0.4. Four was this number. So we're looking at, at these two numbers right there, okay? All right, so... Uh, so we get those two numbers right there, and then so what we're going to do now is uh, the area to the left of negative 1.5 is, is this number right here, and the area to the left of negative 0.4 is that number there. So what we're going to do is this, this area here is this number, and then this area from here all the way over is this number. So to get this part right here, we just subtract those two. Okay, and we get about 0.2778, okay? And probability, you guys, is a fraction answer or a decimal answer. So unless it asks for percent, then probability is your decimal answer. All right. Okay, so if you are in uh, my class or our class, you're going to be doing that. Take care.